Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Did you know you can support the channel by joining? Something to think about. Now onto the stories. Case file number 920, written by Hot Honey Buns 1. More evidence of the universe losing cohesion. My adorable but easily stressed out wife and I have been puzzled by this. Downright mind boggled. We live in a small Wisconsin suburb in a home that we own together. We're in our 30s. I'm a roughneck, blue collar man. I enjoy beer, beef, and sports. Despite this being rather common, I am who I am. My wife works for a Fortune 500 corporation in human resources. She works only part time from home. Although we don't yet have children, hopefully that will change soon. I bring all of this up to show that we are regular people. Given how absurd the event that occurred was, I felt compelled to say this. I had the day off from work and my wife was off too. We decided to make a day of it by relaxing. Ordinarily, we'd plan an extravagant and expensive outing, movies and dinners. Hey, it's getting damned expensive now with inflation and all of that, not to mention gas prices. So, home-cooked dinner, a stew, and a movie, cuddled up on the couch. Yep, that works too. After dinner, we curled up on the couch watching Die Hard, which is by far the best Christmas film, when the TV image becomes distorted. We purchased this brand new TV a few years ago, so it isn't even very old yet. All the bells and whistles included, 4K, smart TV, nothing had ever malfunctioned before. I tried fidgeting with the remote and turning the TV on and off, but the image remained the same, which irritated me a little. The sound was still incredibly clear. I was irritated that I had to move out of the cozy bundle of blankets my wife and I were curled up in to try to fix the TV. I had gotten up and already started to approach it when it fixed itself. Okay, that's cool. Then I hear my wife ask, What is that next to the TV? Do you notice that? She was pointing towards a little unoccupied space close to the TV. There, I too saw a tiny spherical ball of nothing. Black. Have you ever seen the TikTok clips where they make ultra black paint drawings on surfaces and attempt to create optical illusions with it? Like creating the illusion of a hole in the earth when all that's there is paint? That is how it appeared, but it didn't matter from what angle you looked at it. Instead, it appeared to be floating next to the TV, rather than being painted to the wall. It was quite small, possibly the size of a pinball. I walked up close to it, but I didn't dare touch it. My wife and I were transfixed by this pinball of nothingness. We don't know what time it was when this thing appeared, until it ceased to be. A few minutes, probably. We were deeply unsettled by whatever that was. Did it also mess with our TV? But really, what did we just see? Has anyone else seen something like this? We mention this to each other every day. Case notes for file 920. Evidence of the universe losing cohesion. Right, so we're back to the dead pixel of space-time. This was a story I read a few months ago. There was this person, I think was heading towards his garage, and in the archway that was heading towards it, he looked up and he saw a tiny dot, like a pinprick in the universe. And it was just this dark, dead pixel of space-time. At least that's what I called it. This seems very reminiscent of that, although it seems described as larger than what he described way back then. He was more like a tiny, tiny dot versus this being a pinball size. So this anomaly, if it is the same anomaly, seems to be growing in size, which is very concerning. And way back then I told everyone in my notes that it terrified me. It's one of the most terrifying, you know, screw ghosts or demons or whatever, a dead pixel in space time? Hard to get more terrifying than that. That just shouldn't be happening. I wonder if it's literally the exact same anomaly that the other person saw. They didn't say where they lived. I don't know if this thing can travel, if it's the same thing it's growing in size, or are there multiple of them? This is the second time I've heard this. There's only two stories that I've seen. There probably are more events that people haven't said, posted yet. This is very creepy. What do you guys think about this? Do you think it's Evidence of it destabilizing? Case file number 921, written by Cracker Bear. On Christmas Day, our family broke gravity. This happened on Christmas Day. The entire family had gathered at my grandparents' house for the annual holiday feast, and I do mean a feast. 
were a family of ravenous eaters, proud and shapely folk, let's just go with that. As such, the dining room table was overflowing with dishes. I'm talking about everything from Christmas deviled eggs to mashed potatoes to honeyed ham to Watergate salad. You name it, we got it. Even cranberry sauce that only one person seems to touch, and somehow we never see who it is. We were all enjoying our supper when something weird happened. Extremely weird. Without warning, the dining room table lifted itself up about an inch off the ground. Everyone stopped talking and stared in amazement as a table hovered in midair for a moment before falling back down. And bear in mind, it wasn't some graceful slow fall. It's kind of crazy how loud and rumbling an inch of freefall from a whole dining room table can be. Everyone else saw that, right? Grandma said first. I think everyone was scared to admit they did. We all spent the next few minutes wondering what could have possibly caused this. Uncle Chris thought it might have been a small earthquake, while Granddad thought it was a ghost. To be fair, my grandpa is heavily into the supernatural, according to Grandma. He doesn't talk too much about that with us. As we continued to talk about this freaking nuts situation, the table lifted itself off the ground again. This time, staying up for several seconds before, once more, falling back down. I think it's trying to tell us something, Grandpa said, but winking at the others. Somehow, he's not terrified by this like the rest of us are, or at least if he is, he's trying to diffuse the horror with humor. And it was working, everyone laughed a little, but still with that tension in the air. Everyone took a plate and we moved the remaining supper over to the living room. Not something my grandparents liked doing, mind you, but given the circumstances. The good news? All of the dishes had remained intact on the table, more or less. Some cracks in a few plates, but at least nothing fell off besides a couple slices of ham, which Porkchop promptly dispatched for us. Porkchop, oh, he's a Yorkshire Terrier, by the way. Who needs a Roomba when you have a pork chop? my grandma always says. The other good news. The table remained firmly bound by physics the rest of the evening, and since we left, as updated by my grandparents. You know what I found so odd about this? Outside of breaking gravity, it's that pets always respond first whenever I hear about paranormal accounts involving ghosts or beings that we can't see. Maybe that's inaccurate? Or perhaps there was nothing supernatural about it at all. In that case, I'm just baffled. Has anyone else experienced the dining room table just lifting off by itself? Or other furniture, I guess. Case notes are file 921. Our family broke gravity on Christmas. Your granddad sounds like a pretty awesome person to be around. Supernatural and humor together. Good stuff. Let's go. But you're absolutely correct that pets, especially cats, but dogs too, they have a keener sense of entities beyond our dimension that we can't see. So indeed, the fact that Porkchop didn't react at all? I mean, I don't know. Maybe Porkchop is just lazy. I, I assume even if pets have this ability, it doesn't, or the sight, it doesn't mean they're all going to react. Maybe if they're a very chilled out dog, he just wouldn't react. But I do lean a bit more towards this being some sort of actual physical universe glitch where gravity was somehow turned off at the bottom level of the table, but not fully because the plates and everything you didn't describe them as floating still on the, the table pulled, well pulled is a misnomer for gravity, but they were drawn to the planet on the table, but the table itself was levitating. Sort of like if you have one of those levitating spinning plates, you can add things on top of it and they're still bound to the surface of the platform they're floating on even though the platform itself is floating. They're kind of cool. There's, you can buy them on Amazon. Little spinning like UFO saucers that are magnetically lifted. So I don't know if the magnetism is involved here. Probably not because there's a table. What could cause this? It's very unclear but it's pretty cool. And if you think about it, an object de-rendering and duplicating moving between parallel universes, is it really that much more unusual for gravity just to turn off for a little bit? I don't think so. An object entirely disappearing is a bit more trippy and it seems to be happening all the time. Bonus file, written by Sexy Poker, my granddad, the master of time. My whole system was shut down after my grandpa's funeral. I struggled to accept that he had actually passed away while I sat in the restaurant with my family trying to reconcile the reality that he was no longer among us. If you've never lost someone truly close to you, it feels like your insides are being pulled, twisted, contorted, and then eviscerated into mush inside your own chest. And it never stops. My mom and dad suggested going to a restaurant after the funeral, 
to try and take our mind off of it. I wasn't hungry at all, so I just had a salad. Sitting there trying to digest both the food and the sorrow, the entire restaurant gradually froze in time. All the sounds of silverware clinking and people talking eventually came to a total halt. Everything was motionless and silent. Waitresses were in mid-step at an angle where trying to pretend to be frozen just couldn't work for any real length of time. My mother and I looked at each other. We spoke or tried to, but no sound came out. We sat there for at least a few minutes until finally everything unfroze and the sounds of the restaurant resumed as if nothing had ever happened. My heartbeat was absolutely not frozen during this, that's for sure. In fact, to the absolute opposite. At least I know my heart is strong, even if it shattered. We looked around the room, but no one else seemed to have acknowledged anything out of the ordinary. Time had simply paused, but just for us, and we couldn't shake that feeling that it had something to do with my grandpa. God, I miss grandpa so much. We live next door to each other, so it wasn't the typical situation of only seeing him a few times a year when possible to break off from the obligations of life in school. I'd love to believe that this was him saying goodbye. Maybe I needed that. Maybe my mom needed that too. Maybe that's reading too far into it. But honestly, it's what we will choose to believe. It makes all the difference in the world. Case notes for the bonus file. My granddad, the master of time. I could speculate a lot here. There have been other accounts of people who have experienced frozen time, or at least time that slowed down. Often in restaurants too, which is curious. Maybe it involves, has to involve a lot of people around. Who's to say that, that those people didn't experience losses in their lives too? Maybe this is related to your granddad's soul trying to send a message, and this is the only way he's, he understands how to do it right now. It takes time, I'm sure, to adapt, even if it's just a fragment of your granddad. It would take time for that fragment, that sentience that still lingers behind, to understand how to use their abilities. You don't just hop into something and know exactly what to do right away. It's one of my favorite episodes of Supernatural and has to learn how to actually use, interact with the world. You don't just know how, it, has to, it takes time to learn it. It's a skill, like anything. Regardless of all that, I just want to say that I'm very sorry for your loss, and I do believe this could possibly be related to your granddad sending a message. But even if it's not, He's okay. He's either in a new reality, or maybe just a part of him is left behind, and I'm sure he loves watching you and live your life. The best thing you can do is just live a great life. I think that's the best thing we can ever do for anyone that moved on. Live our best life. That's what they would want. And the end of my notes, the uh, handy table for my donut, as you probably noticed. Pretty good. Chocolate. Can't beat that. Well, maple glaze is pretty good too. Honey glaze is the best one. Tim Hortons is where it's at. But there's no Tim Hortons in North Carolina. It's very disappointing. Donut, so you have to like the video. I think that's a rule or something. I don't make the rules. That's just what they are. <laughs>